Today I'm going to be taking a look at my newest acquisition, or rather I should call it my newest toy. I didn't really need this thing. It's a Heathkit IT28 capacitor checker, which you can use to check out capacitors, measure resistance, and I think it's induct inductance. Um, I've got the here, I guess you would call it the assembly and operation manual, which I would strongly recommend that you get if you buy a piece of equipment like this, or for that matter, any equipment, because you just don't want to be twiddling knobs and following instructions, and you really don't know what happens, you know. Um, especially, if you say, if you're troubleshooting something, you want to know why, what you're doing and why you're doing it. Um, so I got the instruction manual here in the assembly manual, but I didn't bother to read it all the way through, which is um, exactly what I should be doing. I just skipped around here and there, but I am going to go ahead and read to this thing. Um, so I know how it actually operates. This unit here, the it actually it uses tubes, which I'm really not... A, a fan of. I really don't have any kind of tube equipment or do I work on tube equipment although I learned all about tubes when I'm back in the day when I went to electronics school um, but I haven't very been been very much touch with any type of tube equipment I'm really not interested either. This here unit is um, looks like but it's pretty self-explanatory like I said I am going to read through the complete manual from front to back. I think it's, I don't know how many pages, I think it's under 20, under 20 pages. So taking a look at this thing, I can say that this tube here, this so-called eye tube, came on, which is a good sign. It would suck if it would stay, uh, stay dark and I had to replace, and if I would have to replace one of these things because they're probably hard to get and I'm not going to be able to get it for a buck or two even if I could find one somewhere. I don't know how I decided to buy this capacitor checker. I think I was working on something not too long ago and I thought to myself, hey, it would be pretty cool if I could, you know, have something here to, say, measure this ceramic capacitor or something like that. But then I really, if I thought about it, then, say, if I didn't know if a capacitor was bad or not bad for sure and I just wanted to go ahead and solder another capacitor in parallel to check it out it'd probably be faster than this way because this way I have to pull the whole thing out anyways so well now I've got the unit so I'm going to go ahead and try to check out a resistance here first of all um, I've got a 1000 ohm resistor okay I'm already in R1 here and I think I would have to dial in resistance R would be here um, 1000 ohms that would be R times 1 wait a second so it actually would have to be right here I believe I'm not actually Sure, but I'm on the right scale, R times 1, there's R times 100. So if I was on R times a R times 100 scale, then it'd have to be over here on 10 here. So I think I'm actually on the right scale. And it's actually not doing anything whatsoever. Okay, maybe there's um, an open, some kind of open inside the unit. I'm going to have to pull this a unit apart. I wanted to change the, the old capacitors out anyways, because I think they stopped coming out with this unit in 1977. And since this is a heat kit, I think they were all put together. Of course, it's a kit. And... Uh, Everybody soldered differently, so I want to take a look at all the solder joints, 
Also, I'm going to do is spray all of the controls here and all of the switches, which needs, which you should do that anyways. So that was that. Let me go ahead and try a capacitor. Okay, I've got a little um, 47 microfarad capacitor. Of course, you have to observe, I think, polarity. And here, the minus to the minus. Okay, let's see. We can't measure the capacitance. Um, I think I would go on electrolytic and then C times. Let's go on C times 1, and that would be. Okay, C times 1. It looks like this unit measures all the way up to 1,000 microfarads. Okay, I'm going to go to C times the extended scale, which would be this inner scale. 47, which means I would be dialing it in here. I think what's supposed to happen here is this thing here, this... Uh, I tube here I think this is supposed to see I should have read the manual of course first which I didn't I think this would have to be this is gonna have to be closed and then when I get to the 47 microfarad position here then it would have opened and then when I move past it, it would have closed again so it's not working there either I have the same problem that I did when trying to check out the resistance. Um, well, let's check it out for leakage. Okay, I did see some movement there. Okay, so that's working. That's good. Not good. Now let me go ahead and try the leakage. So to sum it up, I am going to spray all the controls and switches, check all the solder joints, um, probably switch out a lot of a, a bunch of capacitors, or not a bunch, but most of them in here, and then also to check out the resistors and see if they're still in tolerance. I so I got the unit running at least before I do any replacement of parts before the eye tube wasn't um, closing because the eye tube needs to receive negative voltage in order for it to close up and it wasn't doing that and uh, as I had mentioned I think in the beginning of this video I wasn't that familiar with tube technology anymore and so I looked at the schematic and there were three tubes listed and of course this tube here was actually missing what had happened is the person I got it from uh, I got this thing used sent it and took the tube out and wrapped it up extra in paper and it was still in the box that I had got it so I don't know for whatever reasons he did that maybe he thought it was gonna fly out or something during transport or it, it wasn't working when he sold it to me when I initially put the tube in, it didn't, the filament didn't light, and so what I did is I sprayed the the contacts with uh, the pins, basically I sprayed the pins with contact cleaner, and that um, basically cleared the problem up, and now it's working. So now I'm going to go from there. Now here's what I me when I said it was supposed to be a negative voltage which was missing earlier because of that tube you can see here that it's minus 45 volts DC or you actually you can't see it because my hands in the way but you can see it right now you should be able to see it right now 
No, still not because there's a shadow. Let me try it from here. There. It's minus 45, and uh, that's actually what it should be, or else the eye tube there is not going to be showing any kind of movement.